Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. <clears throat> um, so Sunridge, uh, we are a junior uh, company based in Vancouver uh, on the TSX Venture Exchange, uh, SGC symbol. Uh, we have been uh, exploring, operating in Eritrea for the last 11 years, where most of that time we have been uh, a, an aggressive, I have to say, uh, exploration company. We've had a great deal of success on what we call the Asmara project. We've outlined a lot of copper, zinc, and gold. So despite the name of the company, uh, predominantly this is a copper-zinc uh, play, um, just referencing um, what Eric had said before, some bullish comments on uh, a long-term copper and zinc. Um, in this uh, market uh, this, uh, for junior companies, I think we'd have to all agree this is low tide, and uh, because of low tide, all the boats are sinking on the mud flats, and, uh, uh, and I think this creates some uh, buying opportunities uh, for people, uh, for some companies like Sunridge that have, uh, that have money. Uh, we're not looking for money at the moment, uh, and we have short-term uh, uh, plans for, for being in operation later this year, which I'll explain in a minute. Um, <clears throat> we have a market cap of uh, only about 30 million, less than $30 million, which is a fraction of the value of the of the project. Uh, it's worth multiples of that. So let me quickly uh, run through um, the summary presentation here and show you a bit about the property. Um, like I say, we've had a lot of success uh, over the last few years, exploration success on the Esmara project. Uh, the last two or three years, we've been focusing more on bringing these projects into production. And we completed a feasibility study in 2013 that showed some very strong economics, a $692 million value at a 10% dis discount rate. We've recently applied, well a year ago, applied for our mining license. We expect that mining license to be approved uh, this year. Uh, and we have a, a, a three-phase program bringing uh, this very large project into production in three small steps. The first two are particularly small. Um, this ultimately, though, will be a very large mine, a, a robust mine uh, producing 65 million pounds of copper a year and 29,000, uh, uh, sorry, and, and 184 million pounds of zinc per year. So again, long-term projections for copper and zinc are looking pretty good at the moment, even though copper has been weak recently. We're now, you know, with this project, we're looking 15, 16 years into the future. One very important thing that I'll explain in a minute is that we have full backing of the government of Eritrea. Not only full backing, but they're paying us money. Yes, we're getting hard currency from one of the poorest countries in the world. Uh, in Amco, the state mining company, has paid us $5 million of the agreed $18.33 million for their participation in the project. So we have cash at the moment. Um, and we're following in the footsteps of Nevsan, another successful company, a very successful company in Eritrea that have the same arrangement with the government and have been in production for the last four years and have been a phenomenal success. And we also have uh, exploration properties. Uh, here we are. Um, in the, around the central part of Asmara. It's what we call the Central Highlands in this area here. All our projects are just within a half an hour drive of the capital city, which notably is just 120 kilometers from the port city of uh, Masawa. At the moment, the Bisha mine, which is another four hour drive out to the west here, is trucking their copper concentrates uh, all the way to Asmara, past our projects, and down to uh, the port city of Masawa. We are about a quarter of the, that distance, so very close to that. This is what Asmara looks like. It's not what you expect. It's a delightful former uh, uh, Italian colony, sun shining, people are friendly, uh, there's no crime. It's a very uh, delightful place. We all love to spend time there. Um, it's considered to be the safest and most beautiful capital city in Africa, and I think we can all attest to that. Population of the country as a whole is 4 million. It's been an independent country from Ethiopia for about 22 years now. Uh, you might be surprised to know that Eritrea, in terms of risk, was right in the middle by the Fraser Institute a, few, a couple of years ago. We have ex excellent infrastructure, paved roads, grid power, and, as I say, close to the port city of Misawa. Um, this is what our projects look like at the moment. Uh, this is the city of Asmara, population about 400,000. It's about 
50 kilometers top to bottom here. The green are the five remnant blocks of our previous land situation that covered almost all of this map. Uh, the land situation has shrunk out of necessity for the last few years. The main focus is this Embedero deposit here. We discovered uh, or explored all these properties. So 90% of what you have here was a primary Sunridge uh, exploration success. We didn't buy any of this. Some of these were already known, but not in the way that we have explored them. Embedero is a big one, 70 million ton, very large volcanogenic massive sulfide deposit containing a billion pounds of copper and two billion pounds of zinc, as well as gold and silver. So everything is central to Embedero, and all our operations ultimately will be centered around here. Everything else con con considered to be uh, a satellite deposit. Adinephus, small but very high grade, trucking as a sweetener to Embedero. Gupo, just a gold deposit, trucking to Embedero. And down here is Dubawa. This is a modest size, but the interesting thing about Dubawa is that it contains some spectacularly high grade copper. And this is where we'll start operations later this year. Direct shipping ore, 16% copper ore, crushing it to about 10 millimeters. There's a number of smelters around the world that really want that product. And uh, this will make us about $100 million in about six months once this operation starts later this year. Um, in AMCO, the state mining company, this is very important. Um, uh, they exercise their full option to earn, uh, to purchase an additional 30% in the project, bringing their total ownership to 40%. Um, <clears throat> we signed a deal with them in 2014 where they're paying uh, $18.33 million for their additional 30%. This is a fairly low number. I mean, this is a, a government discount, and it was based on the valuation of the pre-feasibility study, not the current feasibility study. They've paid us five million of the 18.33 so far, but importantly, they're responsible for one third of all ongoing operating and capital costs, and they're funding the next six million dollars of project costs. So you can see Sunridge uh, has money from the government. We have about three and a half million dollars in the bank at the moment, which is not all the money in the world, but our, uh, our costs have gone down significantly. Um, this is just a slide showing the ownership of the, of the project. The project is owned 100% by the Esmara Mining Share Company, of which Sunridge owns 60%, and the National Mining Company and AMCO own 40%. This is really to clear up the idea that the Eritreans, the, the government, do not own shares of Sunridge. They own shares in the, in the joint venture company. Uh, this slide is really showing the amount of contained metal in the four deposits that make up the feasibility study. Um, these projects, you can see that Embedero dominates here, and, and the bulk, 90% of the value, is here. If we were a large company and uh, capital costs didn't matter to us that much, and we had the money to do it, we'd probably go right in production here. But the benefit of having things like Dubawa and these other deposits, we can stage this into production in these difficult times. The grades here are anywhere from middle grade to, uh, to particularly spectacular high grade. We discovered all of this ourselves. The net, net present value we talked about of the feasibility study, post-tax, $428 million. So you can see a very sturdy project. Uh, we use those metal prices, 325 copper. Again, that's significantly higher than copper price today, but we are looking uh, 15 years into the future here. A uh, dollar metal price, a uh, dollar a pound for zinc. Um, capital costs for the, our phase one production, $30 million. We're going to raise that by debt financing. We're in advanced discussions now of debt financing. We're not doing an equity financing, certainly not at these prices. We, we believe we can bring this project into production without issuing another share. So phase one would start later this year, direct shipping the copper ore, which in turn would pay for one, phase 1B, one $50 million of a heap leach operation, which would then make the financing of the much larger operations, two and three, very doable. This will be a large mine um, in, 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 in when it's finally developed in phase three. These are the production numbers. Um, these are the details of uh, phase one, two, and three. Uh, we'll be in production, um, uh, as I say, later this year with phase 1A, which will pay for phase 1B, which will help pay for phase two and three. These are our timelines. Uh, just I'm running out of time, but we'll expect to get our, obtain our mining permit uh, before the middle of this year. 
start mining operations, mobilization in August this year, and start moving dirt uh, later on I I this year at, at Debawa. 210 million shares, our market cap of uh, just uh, under $30 million. Uh, the summary, I don't have time to go through, but we're out here, have a booth here. Greg Davis and I are happy to talk to anybody. We have a booth at the PDAC uh, tomorrow and Monday. So thank you all for your attention.